What's up, guys? It's Ben with 2020 Election Predictions, and this is my first video in a while. I was on a road trip with my friends, so um, I'm back and I'm ready to do my updated 2020 presidential matchup between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Um, we are about three months um, from the election. I think we're um, 91 days exactly, so we're getting in the home stretch, and a lot of things have changed since I've done my past video in the past three weeks, so I want to give you all a full update. And before I get in my video, I wanted to thank everyone for getting me to a thousand subscribers. I really appreciate it. And we're, we're just starting. I, I want to, my channel is going to explode in the future, I think. And I, I think we, we might start a Discord. I might start my own Twitter account. So um, the sky is the limit. So diving right into this electoral map, right now I have Donald Trump at 131 electoral votes and Joe Biden at 217 electoral votes when I only fill in these safe and likely states. So right now, I see Colorado, Minnesota, and Virginia as likely states for Joe Biden. Um, for sure, I think that Colorado and Virginia, um, Joe Biden's going to win by five or more points. Um, Minnesota is the only state where I think Donald Trump could potentially um, keep the margin within five points. However, just looking um, at the polling um, from Minnesota, Joe Biden's up by about 10 points, and unless... Um, Donald Trump starts um, campaigning there a lot or starts to make a play for it. I do not think he will um, get into that margin too much. And I, I don't think that Donald Trump's going to put a lot of money into states that he didn't win in 2016 because I think right now Donald Trump is in total um, defense mode or in offense or defense, however you want to say. He wants to defend the states that he won in 2016. And um, you can see that where he's putting his money. Um, and I think that Iowa right now is a likely Republican state. I understand that in the average of the polls, Trump is only up by three points. But I think come election day, Donald Trump's going to improve there. He won by that nine to ten points in 2016. So I think he will be able to win Iowa by um, at least five points, um, probably between five and seven points if I had to guess. Um, so let's dive in right now to the lean Republican states. The first state I want to go to is the state of Texas. Um, I do think Texas will still be a lean Republican state. I know there's a lot of media attention that Texas could potentially go blue this cycle. I don't think this will happen. I think that Donald Trump will win the state between um, one and a half and three and a half points. If we look at the polls right now, according to the 538, we do see that Biden is in the lead. Um, we've seen in the past that Donald Trump's been up by like three to four points, two to four points. And so that I, I think right when we see the coronavirus um, hit, um, Texas is pretty hard. That's when his poll numbers have dropped. Um, I still think that Trump will win probably by a little bit more than two points. Um, John Cornyn has been pulling very well against his Senate opponent in Texas, and I think this will help Donald Trump. This is one of those states where I think that the, um, Repu the uh, Republican Senate candidate, he's an incumbent, will outperform Donald Trump, and I think will help him in the state. Um, I I, this it's not 2018. It's a presidential year, and I think that Texas still has um, more registered Republicans than Democrats. Even though a lot of Democrats are moving into the state, so I think Donald Trump will be able to keep the state. Um, the next state that I see as a um, lean Republican state is the state of Ohio. Um, I understand that 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 Joe Biden has been up in the polls. Um, I think uh, Donald Trump just surpassed him again. Um, in 2016, um, it was very like Iowa, similar margins. Um, the polls had Donald Trump only up by like two or three points. He won by nine points, so the polls are pretty off. Um, no one really talks about that because uh, he was still predicted to win Ohio. Um, the polls, the more, the more people focus on the Rust Belt states where the polls are wrong. Um, I still think Donald Trump will win the state, um, and I don't think either campaign is going to invest a lot of energy into Ohio because – as you can see, Donald Trump has a lot of work to do besides Ohio. Um, and the last lean Republican state, I think, is will be the state of Georgia. Um, although we've seen some pretty close polls in the state of Georgia, um, I think that Donald Trump's advantage will still be a little bit greater come Election Day. Um, we, we do see that Donald Trump is up by 0.7 points. Um, it's very much still in the margin of error. I do think Donald Trump will win the state between two and three points. I still think, like Texas, even though the Democrats are consistently trying to make a play for it, I still think in a presidential election year, um, the Republicans will be able to hold on. It's not 2018. The Democrats didn't even win in 2018, but I, I think the Republicans will be able to um, extend the 2018 margins by a little bit. 
So next up, going to the lean um, Democrat states. I'm going to go in order of um, like the uh, Joe Biden having the largest margin. I think um, New Mexico will be a lean Democratic state. I could easily put this in the uh, uh, likely Democratic state, but at, looking at the data um, uh, among Hispanic voters, um, New Mexico is the only state that has more Hispanic voters than any other um, ethnic group or uh, ra- racial group. Um, and we, we've seen that Donald Trump, according to the polls, is doing better with Hispanic voters um, than he did in 2016. I think this is for several reasons. I won't give it uh, get into those right now. So I do think New Mexico will be a lot closer than people um, think. I think the polls have Joe Biden up by between 10 and 11 points. And we saw in um, 2016 that Gary Johnson almost got double-digit um, vote totals. And I think that we'll see most of those Gary Johnson voters do go to Donald Trump. Um, so uh, New Mexico will be an interesting state to look at. It's been moving leftward a lot, but I think this could be a state where Donald Trump actually improves um, on his 2016 performance, um, unlike many of these other states. Um, next up is moving to Nevada. It has similar demographics to New Mexico. Uh, typically, the polls have actually overestimated Republican um, support. Donald Trump was like, I think, ahead in the polls in 2016, but ended up losing the state by three points. I think he will lose the state between three and five points. But because it has a large Hispanic population like New Mexico, I think that Donald Trump actually could um, mimic his um, 2016 appointments or p- potentially even improve if he really makes um, inroads into that the Hispanic community. Um, next up is is New Hampshire. Um, New Hampshire was the closest state in, um, in 2016 in terms of raw vote totals. Um, Donald Trump's approval rating has declined a lot in New, New Hampshire. Um, and I think that his um, – I, I, I saw a recent article that had his disapproval rating at 60%. Um, I don't think Joe Biden will be able to crack 60% by any means. I still have this in the lean Republican column. I could easily see this going into the likely – or ugh, lean Democratic column. I could easily see this going into the likely Democratic column. Um, in, in the near future. But right now I have it as a lean democratic state. In fact, I do want to look at the um, poll numbers in the state of New Hampshire. Right now we see uh, Biden as a nine point lead. But if we look at pre-coronavirus numbers, which I, I think can be a more accurate um, indicator if the coronavirus numbers decline when it comes to the election, you see that Trump is running pretty close to Biden. So Um, I think definitely that Trump can improve in his poll numbers um, uh, getting closer to Election Day. Um, Next up, we're going to move up to Michigan. Um, I could definitely see Michigan also moving into the likely Democratic column. Right now, I have it in the lean Democratic column. There's this news story that said that Trump is actually not investing a lot in the state of Michigan, which I actually think is a pretty smart move by the Trump campaign. You see that that Trump right now is in like full defense mode in terms of defending Florida, Arizona, and uh, Georgia, and North Carolina. I think this is actually pretty smart in terms of like using your resources wisely. I mean, obviously campaigns have a finite use of resources. Trump doesn't need the state of Michigan. And, and just looking at the polls um, of all the Rust Belt states, um, Michigan's going to be the hardest state for Trump to keep in 2016. I think it was a little bit of a fluke. Um, if turnout had been higher in the African American community in, say, in cities like Detroit or Flint, I think um, Hillary Clinton could have easily won that state. Um, so I think it makes sense that Trump isn't get, isn't investing a lot, but we see that um, that it still could be close. Um, I think it won't be as close as it was in 2016, and I think it will go in Joe Biden's favor. Um, and the last lean Democratic state I have right now is the state of Pennsylvania. Um, looking at the polls in Pennsylvania, al- although there have been a few outliers that have it pretty close, um, Joe Biden has been consistently up in the state. And um, it's it's closer than M- Michigan for sure. And and the and the reason why I'm not like character, character, ch- characterizing Michigan or Pennsylvania as um, more favorable to Joe Biden, uh, like more – mimicking the polls is because I do think that Donald Trump will improve his position and the polls were consistently off in in, um, 2016 because of the shy voter effect, especially in these um, Rust Belt states. Um, So right now we're at 268 um, and Donald Trump has 203. So 
Joe Biden only needs one more electoral vote to um, win right now. Um, but next time I'm going to go into the tilt Republican states. Um, right now, I see uh, North Carolina as a tilt Republican state. If we look at the polls, I think that Joe Biden is up by around two points. Um, and we've, we've seen in, in the past that Trump actually has uh, been ahead um, even before March. But North Carolina is going to be a very close state. Um, Trump won it by three and a half points in 2016. That, that's why I do see um, Trump just na- narrowly ahead right now, even, the, even though the polls have him down very narrowly as well. Um, I, I think the governor's race is going to hurt Trump. Um, the Democratic incumbent governor, Roy Cooper, is going to win, I think, by a pretty solid margin. So we'll see how much split ticket voting. If there isn't that much split ticket voting, Trump is in a lot of trouble. But I still do think some people will vote for Trump and Roy Cooper. It's, uh, North Carolina is still part of kind of the Bible Belt, the solid South. So I think he will be able to retain some of these voters. Um, next up is the state of Arizona. Um, although the polling right now has Biden in the lead, um, Arizona has not voted for a Democrat on the presidential level in um, recent memory. Um, and I still think that it, it, if we look at pre-coronavirus, we see that Donald Trump was in the lead by like four points. Um, the 2018 midterms were a disaster for the Republicans in the state of Arizona. I don't think Martha McSally was a good candidate. I do not know why uh, Governor Ducey um, appointed her as the Senate candidate. Um, I think she's going to hurt Trump. But right now, I think Arizona is a little bit like Texas. It has a high Hispanic population. And I think that Democrats think they can win this, but I still think for one more presidential election, uh, the Republicans can hold on to it. But then after that, I really do think it's going to be extremely hard for Republicans to win it um, on the presidential level. Next up, we have the second congressional district in Maine. Well, I think Maine at large is going to be a likely um, Democratic state. Oops, um, that's not right. Um, I think that the second district is going to tilt towards the Republicans. Donald Trump won it in um, 2016, and it, it has a lot of um, the demographics of the second district uh, are very similar to like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and um, uh, Wisconsin. So next up, moving to the or the tilt Democratic states, I have the state of Florida, and I, I was very conflicted because I was almost going to put Florida in the lean Democratic state, but just looking at past elections, Florida has always been very, very close. Um, I think the coronavirus has definitely hurt Donald Trump in the state of Florida. You see a lot of the elderly, um, elderly people in polls turning against Trump, and that helped him get to the Oval Office in 2016. But if we look at the history of Florida, even when President Obama won in 2016, he only won the state of Florida by three points, which compared to his margins in other states like like the Rust Belt, like he won Ohio, Iowa, North Carolina, Indiana, but he only won Florida by three points. Um, Florida does have a large population, so that's going to make the percentages not swing as much for sure. Um, I could, if the polling stays consistent to election day, I'm going to have Florida in the lean Republican or in the lean Democratic column. But based on the 2018 midterms, when the polls were off by like three plus points, I'm so I still have this as a tilt Democratic state, and I really don't see a pathway for Donald Trump to win if he doesn't win Florida. So he's really going to have to invest a lot of money in campaign staff in the state of Florida if he wants to win in 2020. And next up, I have Wisconsin. I was really conflicted between putting it in the tilt or lean Democratic column. In fact, I think I might actually put it in the lean Democratic column right now, just the just because the polls um, are showing that um, Joe Biden is in in the lead by like six point six points. Um, the 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 reason why I could argue this could be a tilt Democratic state is because before, before the coronavirus, Donald Trump was even in the lead. Um, and kind of tied with Joe Biden. So we could see these um, numbers come closer together. And in 2018, in the Democratic wave year, Scott Walker almost won. He only lost by like one point, I think. So Wisconsin will be a state that will be heavily contested. I definitely think Florida or Wisconsin will be a tipping point state um, in 2020. So there you have it. Right now I have Joe Biden. Oh, and I also think Joe Biden will um, very narrowly um, win 
the second congressional district. Um, I think this is a this is kind of the most suburban um, district in the state of Nebraska. And on the House level, it's going to be very close, but I think Joe Biden will very narrowly win it. So there you have it. Right now, I have Donald Trump at 230 and um, Joe Biden at 308. Very similar to the 2016 margins, except their foot party. Let me know what you think of this video and please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a, leave a like um, for my um, video and please comment and please comment on just future ideas like whether you want to join the discord, whether I should make a social media account and be on the lookout for more videos in the future. Tomorrow I'm going to do a video on the Senate. Thanks guys.